Hi, welcome to my channel and thank you for tuning in. Today what I'll be doing is doing a review on the Singer Quantum Stylist Touch. Um, please forgive me, I am a bit under the weather so my voice is kind of out. If I'm talking low, I do apologize. Um, so basically right now what you're seeing is the zoom in version on the front panel here. Basically what I'm going to do is go over the machine first and then we'll do some sample stitching. So as you see right now, what you see is the reverse stitch button or the lock stitch button. You would see the needle up and down button. And if you were actually in the middle of sewing and you press this, then it would just slow the needle down for you. And it wouldn't actually pick its speed back up unless you press that button again. And then here is the thread cutter button, which it's only good for, you know, regular thread. It's, it can't cut elastic thread or anything like that. So if you had um, the elastic thread in the bobbin, then you'd have to cut that yourself. And right here we see the start stop button. And with this start stop button, it's actually pretty cool because if the presser feet were to be raised, it wouldn't allow you to sew. And I'll go over that with you in a minute. So um, that is that. And let's go down a bit here. And then here is where you see the needle plate. It is a drop in bobbin here. I have my um, guide here. I only put it there just for the sake of this review. Um, here's the lever over here on this side. And that's pretty much it. And then here, this is the tray that it, everything comes in when you first get the machine. And then I'll go over those games with you in just a second. Okay, so what we see here is the front of the machine. And as we're looking, we see a dial there. What that actually is, is a pressure regulator switch. And basically what it does is um, it controls how quickly the feed dogs take the material. So if you're so, uh, if you're sewing a bulky fabric, then you would want to turn that up so that way it doesn't like get stuck under the in the feed dogs. Okay, so now we're more towards the side of the machine, the, the side that would be facing us. And this whole thing does come off, so it does have a free arm. And like I said, this is where everything is stored as well. And you do not need to take this off to open that. And basically what came in here were 13 different presser feet. I'm not gonna go over each one, but I will tell you which, which ones all came with it in just a second. So there's 13 presser feet in here, as well as a extra auxiliary spool so that you can sew with a double needle. Um, needle packs and I'll go over that with you. It came with four bobbins. It came with the screwdriver and the seam ripper. And it came with a needle plate screwdriver as well. So let's just get this put back. And it also came with that guide there. Okay, so basically what the machine came with was a pack of needles, which there were five needles in the pack. It came with four Singer Class 15 bobbins. One was actually on the machine when it got here. It came with a seam ripper, a brush, an auxiliary spool pin with a felt washer. It came with a screwdriver, a screwdriver for the needle plate, a thread cap, which was already on the machine once it was delivered, a smaller thread cap, which was in the bag of goodies, a seam guide and screw, which is already on the machine there. It also came with an overcasting foot. This is where we're getting into the presser feet. So it actually came with an overcasting foot, a blind hem foot, a zipper foot, a rolled hem foot, a button sewing foot, a satin foot, a quilting bar, an open toe foot, a cording foot, a straight stitch patchwork foot, a darning embroidery foot, and an even feed foot, which is also known as the walking foot, a buttonhole foot, and the underplate that goes with that as well. And then, of course, it came with the all-purpose foot, which is was actually on the machine when it arrived as well, too. Um, it also came with a dust cover so that you're able to cover it up once you're done sewing. And here is a 
picture of everything that it came with. I'm not sure if you can really see that, but that's what it all came with. And then as we turn it on, you'll notice how the LED screen here lights up. This machine is touch screen, so once you actually touch the screen, then the machine will boot up, and you'll hear that as I touch it. Okay, and then once we turn it on, you will notice, let me get this, you will notice that there is the stitch but button and then the lettering buttons and then here is the decorative stitches and then here in the corner you will see like some tools here that's basically um settings and then you will see the question mark which that would be help so if we hit the setting setting button all it really does is it allows you to turn the audible off or on and then it allows you to switch from one needle to two needles and then if you hit home or back, it'll take you back to the home screen. And then if you hit the question button, as you can see here, basically this helps you with threading. It gives, it helps you with threading. It helps you to wind the bobbin. It helps you to thread the bobbin. And it helps you with changing the, the presser feet. I'm not sure if you can see all that because of this light. Okay. And then I'm just going to press the home button, go back home. And if we select the stitches here, You'll notice that it comes with several straight stitches, several um, stretch stitches, and then, you know, let's see, let's keep going down here. And then it has some like, kind of like decorative, decorative stitching in here. And then of course all of the buttonhole stitching. And then if we go back and we go to the decorative stitches, you'll see more advanced decorative stitches. And these are so nice. And Let's say like you wanted to do a heart pattern on something. Once we change to the heart pattern, and that's what we want. Let's see. We change to the where we go. To the heart pattern. And that's what we want. Well, let's say that. Can you see this? Let's see. Yeah, there you go. Let's say that we wanted to do an exact replica on the opposite side well it can't be like that so what you would do is you would go here and you're actually able to change that so that now it looks like that which I absolutely love that feature you can change the width of the stitch as well as the length of the stitch to get a larger size and then we'll go home and um, let me show you this we can see how the red light is on I mentioned earlier that I would explain that to you. Um, basically, if the presser foot is raised, it won't allow you to sew unless you put the presser foot down. But notice how I put it down and it's still red. The reason being is I actually did not select the stitch yet. So I'll select the regular stitches and then I'll just select a regular straight stitch. Now that I've selected the regular straight stitch, the light has turned green. And I think that is a very um, advanced way to you know in case children get around the machine they actually have to know to push that down and select stitch in order for the machine to actually work so we'll turn that back up and also if you wanted to use the self um the self stitch stitching basically you would unplug the presser foot and then you just use the start and stop button and it actually is controlled by here the speed so if you want it to slow, so slow because you're, you know, still a beginner, um, or if you want to be, you know, in the middle, then you turn it up to the middle, or if you just like me and in a hurry, you just turn it all the way up. So um, that's pretty much all of that. And then up here is, like I said, where you, they have the uh, decorative stitch. It's, it's basically a chart. And then down here is where we actually thread the machine. I'm not going to re-thread the machine because if you look at it, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you would like a tutorial on how to thread it, I'll be more than happy to do that. But for time's sake, I'm just going to skip that step right now. So let me turn this light back on, maybe do me some good here. Okay, so as we get up here, you will notice there's numbering. And there's two sets of numbers. One is a diagram to the bobbin and one is to thread the needle. So to thread the needle, you would just come 
here, you go up here, then around here, down, right here, all the way down there, and then back up to five, and then back down. And you put the thread into the thread guide here, and then it does have an automatic threader to go ahead and thread the machine. So that's that, and if you wanted to do the bobbin, you would likewise take the thread this way, up here, and instead of going around, you'd actually come up here, then you'd come around this here loop, back it up and go around this here screw, that's the tension thing, and then you'd bring the bobbin here and push this over to thread the bobbin. Once you do that, you'll notice that the screen says it's ready to wind, then you just start threading the bobbin there. Then once you click it back off, you get your screen back. So that's pretty much that. Okay, so now what we're looking at here is the screen where we're still on the straight stitch. And if you see there, it has a picture of a presser foot and it has a letter A. Basically what that's telling me is to use the general purpose foot for this straight stitch. <laughs> now let's say if I wanted to do a different stitch, let's say I wanted to do this one. Then you'll see how the presser foot actually changed to the letter C and that's the foot it wants me to use. And again, it gives me all these options where it's, it's telling me that I can change this to the opposite side and it's telling me that I can change the size of this as well. And so if I change the size here and then I want to go here, it won't allow me to do anything there. And if I wanted to do this, it would still allow me to change the width and you can see it getting bigger there. So it's actually pretty cool. And then I'm just gonna go back and let's see if we did this one. Then it would tell me to use presser foot B. And as you can see, there's no size change. So I can't change the size, but I can mirror it so I can flip the image to do it. And let's see if it'll allow me to change the size here. So it won't allow me to change it there, but it will allow me to make it smaller. And then here it'll still allow me to do the length and thing like that, the width, I'm sorry. So that's pretty much that. And then I'm just gonna go home and I'm gonna select my lettering. Okay, once we get to the lettering, you will notice that right now it's in cursive and we still have these hearts over here. To get rid of those hearts, you would just backspace and they're gone. And now say like if I wanted to write my name, I select my A, I go to the lowercase letters now and I would get my N and my G and my E and my L. Okay, so if I wanted to write my name, I would just put in the letters and then I would start sewing them. And notice that over here it has the same button. Um, you see how it's telling me to use presser foot B again, but when it comes to the width and the length, there's nothing. That means that I'm not able to change the size of that. So the size that it, it sews is actually the size of the lettering. Because this is an embroidery machine, but it, it has some of the functions, but at a smaller scale. So that is that. And then say like if I were to save this, it would be in here, which I have nothing saved yet. And all I would need to do was would be to select what I saved and then angel would just pop up there on the screen but I like I said I didn't save anything yet but it, you are capable of saving okay so that's pretty much all that about that okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to show you some sample of the stitches so let me get my fabric ready and I will be right back Okay, so for the sake of time, I'm just going to do the ones that I don't have to change the presser foot for. So, uh, right now, I'm just going to do a straight stitch. And you'll hear it start up because I haven't sewed yet today. And then it's going to sew. Now, right now, you see it's slow, sewing very slowly. And that is because I have the speed set all the way down. 
So I'm gonna turn the speed up little by little. Okay, and I didn't turn it all the way up for the sake of this video, because I know sometimes videos look crazy. But I will show you the stitch. Okay, so basically what I did was a regular straight stitch, and that was set very small, so now I'm gonna do a wider one. So, we'll do the same thing. Okay, that's good enough for me. Alright, and then here is the wider stitch. So we'll yeah, include yeah. today's tutorial. If I went too quickly or left too many things out, just let me know and I will be more than happy to go more in depth about the machine. But if you have any questions as far as the quality of the machine, um, I have three sewing machines and out of all of them, this one is my favorite. Um, I bought this one from Amazon. Um, it took about two days to get it. And when I got it, you know, I was worried if I would not be happy with it, not be happy with the quality and think that I overpaid. Um, but I don't feel like I overpaid. I feel like it was a great purchase. Like I said, it came with so many different presser feet. It had very detailed instructions in the owner's manual. Um, it does come with a year warranty for the um, parts and things like that. And I just think it's a lovely machine. Um, it's very easy to maintenance. And if you have any questions that I haven't answered now on this video, please leave a comment below and I'll be more than happy to revise the video and, you know, answer your questions. So again, thank you for watching. Remember, if you like this video, go ahead and hit it with a thumbs up and bless you. Have a great day.